G-Man Gordy Gundaker wins that fall! Hey race fans, welcome to your VP Racing Fuel's Week 1 Recap of the Dirt Car Summer Nationals and Dirt Car Summit Racing Equipment Modified Nationals. Let's jump into this past week's action. To kick things off with the Dirt Car Summit Racing Equipment Modified Nationals, Mike McKinney picks up his 10th career series win at the Brownstown Speedway, holding off two-time and defending series champ Nick Hoffman, who is, by the way, behind the wheel of the number seven, owned by Justin Allgaier. He's going to drive that car for the first two weeks of the tour, and when we come back, he's going to get back in his familiar blue and orange number two. Mike McKinney did start on the pole, but man, he got passed by Krupp and Hoffman, and he had to get back around both of them. Will Krupp, also in the JRI Shocks K19 machine, they're doing really well. They're making a run for the championship here this season, taking it day by day. Other big uh, storylines coming into Brownstown with the Modifieds, the 99 of Hunt Gossam. 15-year-old picked up his first win last year at the Oakshade Raceway in Wauseon, Ohio. This year, coming into the tour, already has three wins uh, in dirt car competition, and Hunt Gossam going for that championship as well. Round one of the Dirt Car Summer Nationals did not disappoint at the Brownstown Speedway. Tyler Erb winning a thrilling one over Bobby Pierce with four laps to go. Tyler Erb goes to the bottom, and man, he had that hard right rear mounted on, and he was off to the races as Pierce would tackle the cushion, overshoot the cushion just a little bit in three and four, and that allowed Erb to reel him in and pass him for the win. Full-time contenders this season, T Tyler Carpenter is the big story coming into this weekend. Tyler Carpenter going full-time with the series, had a good run there at the Brownstown Speedway. Bobby Pierce as well, looking to see where he stands after the first two weeks. He's getting ready to continue. Brian Shirley playing day by day. Marshalltown, Iowa racer Ryan Gustin, two-time USMTS champ, joining us at the Brownstown Speedway. Never been to the facility. Had a great run for Ryan. And Brimfield, Illinois racer Tim Lance and Tim Lance Jr. on tour this season as well with the 4G of Bob Gardner. But Tyler Erb wins round one in a thrilling fashion at the Brownstown Speedway. While Mother Nature didn't play nice and allow us to run our features at the Peoria Speedway, we would roll into the Tri-City Speedway for round three of the Dirt Car Summit Racing Equipment Modified Nationals, where Kyle Steffens and Rick Knoyer led early. We were up close to seeing a 68th different winner, but six-time champion Mike Harrison was right there to get his 50th career Dirt Car Summit Racing Equipment Modified Nationals win at the Tri-City Speedway. The Dirt Car Summer Nationals rolled into the Tri-City Speedway for round three in the first 10,000 to win feature of the 35th annual Dirt Car Summer Nationals. Las Cruces, New Mexico racer Johnny Scott surprised us at the Tri-City Speedway, joined us there, and man, he had a good battle going on with Ryan Unzicker up front as they would battle side by side, and Bobby Pierce went to his express lane, the cushion, reeled him in, passed them both. Johnny Scott would retire from the race after his front nose folding underneath him, and Bobby Pierce would win by over 3.5 seconds. Pierce celebrates as he wins 10 grand. The Dirt Car Summit Racing Equipment Modified Nationals would head to the Fairbury Speedway in Fairbury, Illinois, and that racetrack did not disappoint. While Mother Nature was a little bit of a threat, we got the show in, and it was a dynamite one. Mike McKinney and Alan Weiser side by side, the entire race exchanging slide jobs in between lap traffic, and Mike McKinney said in his interview after Brownstown's victory that they tell him he's only good for pounding the cushion at Fairbury. Well, he proved tonight that he is champion quality for the Dirt Car Summit Racing Equipment Modified Nationals as he picks up his second win with the series. The Dirt Car Summer Nationals visited the Fairbury Speedway for the 32nd time in series history, and this one did not disappoint. The biggest storyline line coming into the 35th annual Dirt Car Summer Nationals was can Shannon Babb tie or pass Billy Moyer on the all-time win list? Well, Babb unloaded at the Fairbury Speedway. He was the last driver to check in, but he was there with his Rocket Clemens number 18, and he came so close as he led some of the closing laps until Gordy Gundicker from the 14th starting position shocked the whole field and took the lead with three to go and picked up his fourth ever Dirt Car Summer Nationals feature win and Shannon Babb came oh so close to win 99 but Babb still has a little bit more races in the tank with him with the Dirt Car Summer Nationals this season and Gordy played Gloria all night long after Fairbury's $10,000 victory. Thank you, race fans, very much for watching VP Racing Fuel's Week 1 Recap. We'll be back next week with Hoosier Racing Tires Week Number 2 Recap. Make sure to be at the track with us, and if you can't, go to DirtVision.com. $39 a month gets you the Fast Pass and all the action live from the Dirt Car Summer Nationals. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and visit our website at SummerNationals.com to keep up to date with all the news and stories happening with the series.